Hello, welcome to the Friday, November 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Looks like still about once a month or so we learn about a new site channel attack that allows processes to read each other's memory. Well, this of course is in particular a problem for virtual machines where you have various virtual machines sharing the same hardware. And of course you are relying on the hardware somewhat to keep these virtual machines separate from each other. One attempted solution to this problem is the use of encrypted memory and both Intel as well as AMD have come up with solutions to encrypt memory. Now in part, these solutions of course still aren't perfect and susceptible to some of the same vulnerabilities that can be used to read out other processes memories. A recent paper takes a closer look at AMD's implementation of uh, this particular memory encryption in its NAPLIS generation of EPIC chips. Now for AMD a critical component is the chip endorsement key or CEK. The confidentiality of this chip is critical in order to maintain the security of encrypted memory. Researchers from the Technical University Berlin took a closer look at AMD's implementation and found a method to actually read this key using malicious firmware. What kind of makes this worse is that there's also no protection to actually load old firmware in the chip. So you can always downgrade it. And as a result, there isn't really any great protection for uh, this particular attack. According to these researchers, any protection would require hardware fixes and could not be implemented in software alone. And if you downloaded the Monero command line wallet from the Get Monero website on Monday, you should double check your binaries because you may have downloaded a compromised version. Apparently for 35 minutes, an uh, altered version of the software was offered on the website. The modified version does exfiltrate the seed that is being used to derive your keys to a command control control server so with this your Monero wallet could be compromised. As usual this is a good reminder to always check hashes for software. This is how this problem was discovered in this case. And yes, this case does emphasize that uh, this caution also applies to downloads from the authentic website. So far, no details have been published about what led to the compromise. And endpoint security company Niotron looked into existing ransomware protections as you find it, for example, now included in Windows 10 and found that it's lacking when it comes to how it protects the system from ransomware. According to Niotron, there are three different ways ransomware can actually encrypt a file and only two of them are covered by current protection. The first one, well, the ransomware reads the data from the file into memory, encrypts it and then writes it back to the same file. In the second case, uh, the ransomware will create a new file and then delete the old file. But one way how Niotron found it could bypass some of the existing ransomware protection is if the encrypted data from memory is written to a new file and then the rename call is being used to replace the original file. Apparently this is not detected currently. Now they came out with this technique about a year ago, have since notified vendors, but haven't really gotten a lot of traction with this. So uh, this issue remains unpatched so far. 
And pentester Curtis Purcell uh, did publish an interesting blog post with some dangerous behavior that he observed in uh, default currently patched installed of Microsoft Office. Microsoft Office implemented protected view in order to protect the user from remotely downloaded content and you have to disable it in Office in order to view remote content. Now what Curtis observed is that if you are previewing the document in Windows Explorer then protected mode is not enabled and remote content and including content from SMB shares is loaded. He reported to Microsoft, Microsoft considered this not a security issue, it just considers this a candidate for consideration for potential improvements in a future version of the product. These document previews have always been somewhat problematic and have been known to trigger vulnerabilities in the past doesn't appear to be a great sort of workaround for this. Of course, you should always block outbound port 445 connections with HTTP content. That's a little bit more tricky. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Talk to you again on Monday. Bye.